Welcome back to Factory Floor, our Shop Talk spinoff all about the factory experience at AU. I'm Jonathan Odom. So far, we've talked about concept and prototyping, electronics and CNC machining, big pieces of the product development puzzle. In this episode, we're going to get into something you'll find in just about every consumer product, injection molding. If you're not familiar with it, it can be kind of intimidating. Lots of details, tight tolerances, and high costs if things go wrong. I've definitely been there. Let's dive in. The first product we talked about uh, was the air quality sensor, right? And the big idea with this product is that, and with all of them really, is that we're using as many manufacturing methods we can in one device as sort of a teaching tool. It's a way for you to understand what Fusion has to offer, what our partner uh, products have to offer, um, and how the design and manufacturing process works with consumer products. So with this one, there are two injection molded parts. So I've already disassembled this one partially. So let's pull these off of here. Um, this whole thing went together kind of in a stack. And I will unplug this, and then you'll see that this part just kind of slides in there. And then the same with the battery. So I'm going to pull that out, pull this out. Not the best design right there, putting a little stress on the battery when I pull it out, but hindsight's 2020. And then this is, a, like I said, a three-part injection mold. So there is a mold that, there's a part that comes this way, there's a part that comes this way, and then there's a part that comes this way. The reason we did that is that this needed to have, um, the whole thing needed to stack together. And for reasons I can't completely remember, this was 2018, this seemed like the most reasonable way to do it. You'll see some basic things on here that you see on all injection molded parts. There's a parting line around an edge. That's something you have to uh, specify with the mold uh, engineer. And then there are uh, these little circles on the bottom are from ejection pins. So. This part pulls off, you can see it's smooth. And then inside the mold, injection pins push. You make sure those are on a part that you're not gonna see. And luckily with this part, no one sees it at all once it's assembled because it's all inside the main housing. Then we have the base, which is this white polycarbonate part. Um, it holds this resin 3D printed button and First thing you might notice is that there's these cavities in here. Those cavities are there to uh, prevent what's called slumping. So with injection molding, there's some pretty strict rules around how thick walls can be, how thin they can be. Um, so all of those slot features you're seeing in there are just a way to control that. Um, they also make it easy to, to pull apart and easy to mold because um, the plastic doesn't need to, uh, it makes it easier for the plastic to travel through the mold as it goes in. The other thing you'll notice here is draft angles. So um, this part here, there's a draft angle uh, obviously going this way. It's pretty well pronounced right there. But if you look at these parts, you can probably see that they're based on right angles. So when this was first designed, we thought of these all as right angles. We kind of started there, and then we started adding draft angles. You need draft angles because if you don't have them, if everything's at a right angle, it can distort the, the part when the mold comes off because it's too much friction. It also puts, the friction puts stress on the mold and makes it wear out faster. So a good rule of thumb is about one degree. You can go down to less than that. In some cases you have more than that. Um, but generally speaking, that's a pretty good place to start. We did not have the product design extension yet in Fusion when we made this product. So there was a lot of back and forth with the, the engineer um, trying to get everything just right. And it took a lot more time than it does now. And with the newer products, we did have that extension, and uh, I'll show you um, how that became useful. All right, and then product number two was the badge, uh, the electronic conference badge. And this had also two injection molded parts. But with this one, we went with a, uh, a full injection molded enclosure. The reason for that in this case was that it would make this device lighter. If we had used um, CNC machined parts in the finished product, it would have been kind of heavy to wear around your neck because this thing does attach to a lanyard. So these this two-part injection mold, uh, now that we had the design extension, we were able to use a bunch of the features there to make this a better uh, experience, better product, and also take a lot less time. One of the first features you might see is this uh, 
this little ridge that goes along the side. Let's find a good angle. There we go. So this ridge here, uh, it's, it's a reveal. And that's a little lip that you put around the edge of the two parts that come together. And the reason for that is that when you make an injection mold, the surfaces, the edges uh, tend to be a little bit distorted because it's thermoplastic. So when it's pulled apart, um, it doesn't have a perfect edge there that it would if it was CNC machined, for example. So that's a way to kind of hide those imperfections and make it look nice and clean. The other thing this part has is bosses to put it together. So um, instead of having uh, machine screws going into aluminum machined parts, we have thread forming screws that go through a, in this case, countersunk hole on this on this side and a boss on the other side. A boss is just a fancy name for a little hollow post that goes into an injection molded part. You can see these right here. It's a little tube that comes out and it's got a hole inside that's just the right size for this thread forming screw to fit into and make a nice uh, tight fit. And again, there are draft angles at, at, at play here. So if we look at it from this point of view, you might see that that is not quite a right angle. It's based on one, but it's off by about a degree. And that's the case all the way around. We again have the parting line on this sharp edge. That's the line where the two parts of the injection mold come together that parts them, right? Um, and what something you can do in the Fusion Design Extension is, uh, is specify where that is, right? So then you know exactly where the parting line is going to be. You're not going to see a nasty sharp edge on the side of your, your product. Um, and you're able to hide the things that are conspicuously uh, injection molded parts. And the boss feature is really cool because what it does is when you have two parts together like so, if they both have plastic rules assigned and you add a boss feature, it automatically gives you the, uh, the, the, the cutout, the pocket on the, on the uh, bottom of the device and then it gives you the boss on the inside. This is another one of those places where you can see uh, thicknesses and, and plastic rules coming into play. Because if you didn't have that, uh, the, the depth of this hole just right, uh, you would get sinking on there. It would either sink from being too much plastic or from being too little. One thing that's fun about this product is, uh, is the, the embossed logo on there. This one is embossed up, and that means it is not steel safe. So when I went to the brand people, they didn't want us to use this little F logo because they thought that should be in color. And I, and I was, had to tell them, unfortunately, we couldn't take that off because, again, this is positive, meaning it's negative in the mold. Whereas this older one, we did it the right way, where it was negative on the part itself, meaning it would be positive on the mold, in which case you could mill it down later without making a whole new mold. So steel safe. You got to think about that when you're making this stuff. All right, on to product number three, the keypad. This one, we wanted to try some different features in the product design extension. Um, we still have that reveal we had last time to kind of hide any imperfections on the, on the edges here. We have, uh, you know, the parting lines are all set. We've got draft angles. You know, in this case, you can see it a little bit more pronounced on, on this part, but uh, you can see that was kind of based on a, on a right angle, but it's angled slightly this way because the pull direction of this mold is this way. The way we assembled this, this device, the main assembly method for the enclosure anyway, was clips. And we made these kind of funny 3D printed interface parts uh, that made pockets for those clips to go into. We left those pockets open in case we needed to change something later. Um, when you look at the, when I look at the bottom of this device anyway, I kind of, uh, you know, see some uh, decisions, past decisions that I would have done differently if I were to start over. It looks kind of messy. And uh, usually the way these clips work is that they are hidden inside the device. So we wanted to make it easy to take apart. And since we'd already made these choices to kind of interface a bunch of different parts in ways that were a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more interesting, a little more informative about how you could do assemblies with different types of manufacturing um, didn't make for the easiest device to put together. So if I push down, pull this off, you'll see clips, right? So these are little uh, plastic clips, again, part of the design extension right there. So you can set the locations of these and there are standard rules built in that 
kind of save you from yourself. So um, we didn't actually have to change these, really much of this, much at all, when we went back and forth from the engineers at, at Zometry. Um, they really just kind of had, you know, a few suggestions. One of them was adding this A, this Autodesk A logo right there. There's a cavity on the underside that accommodates the en encoder right here, which kind of is a little bit too tall to give this the profile we, we really wanted. So that Autodesk A uh, adds more material to keep this thin part from slumping down. So something you always got to think about is controlling your thicknesses. And that product design extension solves that problem for you. Another cool thing about this product is the keys. So uh, it's got keycaps that have, if you look here, you'll see a little a little white dot right there. And that's the my, my light table glowing through. So this is a two-shot injection mold. There's a clear core with a black shell around the outside. So you have um, a set of these, I think it was four or five in the mold. You uh, do the, um, uh, the, the clear injection molded part, and then they pop out and you stick that little piece where they're all stuck together into another mold. And then the black uh, polycarbonate is injection molded around it, uh, on top of it basically. So you have a solid monolithic object, but it's got this shell with two parts. And the reason we did that is that on site, we had Datron uh, run their um, Neo CNC machine and cut out the shortcuts that correspond to whatever product you as an attendee use the most. This is a Fusion one, right? So you, you would be able to go and tell them, I use Fusion the most. And then they would run this, this, uh, this job and then cut into each key at a depth of, I don't know, a millimeter, maybe one and a half. Um, to give you these glowing icons for uh, for your keys. These were custom parts. The reason we made them custom was to be able to do this, um, where normally you wouldn't have, you would just buy some store-bought, um, uh, in this case, Cherry MX keycaps. These were actually polycarbonate on the inside and then PBT, I believe, for the outside. Or was it both PBT? I don't remember what we went with there. I know keycaps are typically PBT. We might have gone with polycarbonate with both of these. I don't remember right now. But um, anyway, the point of this, uh, what we chose here, the material, was that it's something that was going to be durable because this is going to get a lot of use. Um, and then also something that would allow us to do clear and uh, black that would interface together and not delaminate when the, when the thing was, um, when the finished part was made. Assembling this was tricky. Um, there were some really tight tolerances between these parts. Having this bridge here between the, uh, the where the where the the scroll wheel was and the bezel um, made it kind of difficult to put together because the parting line tended to bind on this uh, 3D printed material. The 3D printed material swelled more than we thought it would um, with the dyeing process. It usually comes off as gray, so that made the interfacing a little bit more difficult here. So with our next injection molded part, we tried to uh, mitigate that with a couple different uh, methods. So the final version of the keypad is what you're seeing here. And one thing we did differently with this one is that it has bosses and screws. So compare the bottoms of these two, okay? You can see this, this is kind of a mess and this one is nice and clean. And uh, there was a rubber foot, an adhesive rubber foot on each one of the screws on the one in my right hand. The, this was an aesthetic improvement, but it, was, it also simplified the design process. We didn't have to have all these little interface parts pop into the CNC machined part, and then the uh, you know the the screws go into the um, the PCB and all that. We just put everything in a nice stack and put it together here. Again, thread forming screws holding this whole thing together. Screws are a little long, but they're what we had in stock, so we just stuck with them. You might notice they're a little bit close to the edge. That was to keep the bosses from uh, from getting too close to the PCB. So this part has these little clips on the inside, and those clip into the, the key plate. So in order to get it off, all I have to do is get my, little, my fingernail under there and kind of pry it a little bit. Then this comes off. Uh, this whole thing comes off together. So much simpler design. And you can see here the draft angle is different on this one. It's got a smooth kind of curved profile. The proportions are different. Um, it's it's shorter and or 
thinner anyway and wider on all directions, which gives it more of a kind of an elegant profile. And then in order to put this on, all you have to do is snap it so that it fits into that interface uh, keypad, um, key plate part. And then, you know, you'll see if you look at it, especially from the side, that this is a lot cleaner of a design. It's, uh, it's the profile's thinner. Um, it just looks a little more slick. Simpler injection mold. So still two part, but we didn't have to have without this bridge part here, that being taken up in this 3D printed interface part, it made it uh, a cheaper mold. Um, it's actually a little bit thinner. Uh, I think this is maybe one and a quarter millimeters where this one's one, one and a half, 1 1.75, something like that. The finishes are also a little different. So this one, we actually had a gray uh, tint in it that made it a little darker. Whereas with this one, we were able to just um, do different finishes on the on the top and bottom. So the top, we had a rougher finish coming off the, the mold. And on the inside, it was a clear finish. You can still see the inside. It's actually a little bit brighter, um, but also has that frosted effect on it. So it sort of obscures what's going on inside. So I, th I think a better aesthetic finish as well. So as I bring these parts back in, just to kind of wrap up, um, of course, keep in mind that if you're doing a real consumer product and not something that's a, you know, kind of a, a fun, informative project like the one we do at AU, that you'd certainly be doing all this stuff quite a bit differently. Um, the air quality sem sensor, for example, this is a machined aluminum housing with a machined aluminum top with um, two separate injection molded parts, 3D printed parts interfacing, a PCB, all that stuff. If you were making a, a, a consumer product out of this that you were gonna sell, you would not do it this way. <laughs> um, you would probably do it a little bit more like this, where you just have two uh, injection molded parts that have everything housed in the middle. You try to make that part look nice. You may have a metal base if you want it to feel a little more substantial, but you're not gonna be having several different injection molded parts, right? Um, a lot of what we do here is put this together in, into a, a real consumer product, but we add a lot of different manufacturing methods that are more to sort of teach you about what we can do and to make the product a little bit more interesting. Um, also to make it easy to put together, um, you know, or uh, put to hit that sweet spot between uh, easy, too easy, uh, interesting, not frustrating. We got to get all that stuff just right. So a lot of what you're seeing here is uh, maybe extra pieces that don't necessarily need to be there. With this part, for example, this is, like I said, is a little bit closer to what a real consumer product might be, but you probably wouldn't have screws here. You probably would use clips that clip the whole thing together. You may have a, a spot where you could uh, pop it open with a, you know, a little, a little release in there or something to make it uh, easy to take apart if you needed to. Um, you might have a battery, uh, a battery, door that's a, that's a clip that's something you'd see a lot on products that have batteries in them you probably wouldn't have 3d printed uh interface parts like we've got here you may try that for sort of a first run but later on do more injection molded parts because again the longer the run um the bigger the run the more likely it is that 3d printed parts are going to be more expensive so probably again what you what, what you would have here is just two injection molded parts that have all of this stuff built in you know you'd have uh buttons that are two-part injection molded there with silicone maybe for the most part you'd just be relying on those molds to hold all these parts together and do the job for you because it saves time and money and makes it easier to put together all that to say if you want to get into injection molding if you've got an idea for a consumer product of your own uh, try the design extension get get going with the tools there because they're going to help you solve problems way before you even run into them. And then if you go to one of our partners like Zometry, you'll already be in a place where they can give you a good estimate for your design, give you suggestions on how to improve it, um, and then you'll be in a position to get to production much faster. So I hope you learned something here. Uh, I hope you're excited about injection molding and you wanna try it yourself. Our next episode is gonna be 3D printing in production, which I'm really excited about. That's a fun one. Uh, so yeah, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for coming.